The Zoom way they had returned to inform us recording is indeed in progress. Welcome back to Cinema Flicks and Music Picks. I'm Davey, your host for the most, the beast for the least. Least I can do is apologize to John because we're having to retape the first 10 minutes of this, <laughs> which you don't know, but and I didn't need to tell you, but we're all about transparency here, folks. That's right. Um, <laughs> we, we had a wonderful discussion, but I'll be honest, John just started being far too off color. It was it was turning the air blue. There was I'm sorry, that kind of language on this channel, John. Don't I, I normally don't mind that kind of stuff. Oh boy, just too much. Um so not true, not true. <laughs> oh my <laughs> well, at, least you, at least you'll be at church on Sunday to say Sunday that's right um, that's right so John apologies we will crack uh, that's so, all good brother it is all good now what was my first question John you have a channel My Music Corner um, yes also my, MMC folks My Music Corner um, and John and I have gotten to know each other over the past six or so months um, and have Similar interests in places, different interests in others, but enough of a Venn diagram crossover to say hello. Um, That's right. In a singular privilege, John. Um, so tell us a little bit about how you got into the YouTube and game for yourself. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Well, again, you know, thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me on. It's, a, it's an oh. honor and a pleasure. Uh, so, uh, you know, for me, getting it, doing a music channel was, you know, I, I had, I made a name. And I think one of the first things I made up was um, uh, I wanted a way to share a video of a song I had written. And uh, and and I it was a long enough song. I thought, well, I'm just going to put this out. I'm just going to do it on YouTube. I'm going to share it as public and just see how many people like either berate me or <laughs> or uh, laugh at me or whatever. And so, uh, you know, so I think, you know, after three years later, and I think that it's only got about 100 and some views on it, which is which is fine. But. You know, it's it's a very deeply personal song for me because it was because uh, of the subject matter I, I wrote about it. Course, with the yeah. song. It's 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 in the description of the video, so I won't won't take the time up. But but, I uh, you know, I think the big the big thing where I decided to do more into doing a video was really after watching P. Pardo and Sea of Tranquility. So I got to give him props. Uh, you know, I'm like, wow, this is this seems like such fun to do. If only I had that kind of community to do this. Well let's just have a little fun on my own and just throw some stuff out there and see what happens. So probably one of the videos that really made me say, yeah, let's start doing more of this was I did a tribute video to this guy, uh, Bill Samas, who was the guitarist and main songwriter for the band, this band warlord. The band was, this album was like one of the first albums on metal blade. They would do another like consequent live album. And that would be that. Um, uh, Bill kind of went on a different journey. Uh, Mark Zonder, who was the drummer, would go on to Fate's Warning and have a fabulous run with Fate's Warning. Um, they would regroup for a, a, an album in 2001, 2002. Um, and then another 10 years would go by, we'd get the Holy Empire. And then uh, it just re about a year or two ago, uh, Bill passed away. Uh, he'd had a lot of health issues from what I understood. So it, I wanted to do that as a tribute to him, just basically showing off what I had. And I shared it in the Warlord groups. The Warlord groups, man, those people love them in Greece. And uh, these people took to that video. And, uh, man, I got like over 700 views on that thing, which is amazing for me. Mm -hmm. So um, I just would start doing other little odds and ends. Like, you know, I was big, I was big into Rainy Road. So I wanted to talk about the Quiet Riot reissues that came out. And I got the big box set. So I kind of showed off what was in those. You know, one of these days, I still kind of want to listen to the these bootleg CDs I have of those first two albums, compare them with these reissues and say, okay, what's the, what's, where's the sonic difference here? So we'll see. I'll get into that one day. Uh, I, I want to do a side-by-side -side with that. I, I did a, I did a video on uh, Adrian Smith and project. He did a solo album called the silver and gold. I love the album. A lot of people hate it. <laughs> I don't know why I think it's, I think it's a great album, but then, you know, one of the fun albums or fun videos I got to do was I got to talk about this guy, Victor Bono. I mean, who's talking about Victor Bono in 2022, you know, and I, I first got this album as a, uh, as an eight track, as a four or five year old, just learned it. And I, and I would just listen to this thing incessantly and I was learning it. I was memorizing it and I would just talk it, do it randomly as a four or five year old kid. But, uh, you know, and, uh, 
of i wish i had that 45 i was so happy to find this vinyl at a store here in town you know so a few years ago and i only paid a few bucks for it so i was like yeah <laughs> hey you bet i'm gonna get this on and you can and i have a cd version of it too but but you know i love i loved that album so i had of course i'm gonna talk about that um i just like talking about kind of like hidden gems you know maybe stuff people isn't aren't talking about you know the asap album the victor buono the uh I'm trying to think of something else that the uh you, uh, me and Peter Kerr did did a thing, and I gave him a band called Tall Stories that had Steve Ogieri that sang in Journey in the two thousands. You know, just stuff that nobody, maybe nobody knows, nobody talks about. So it's just kind of fun to bring those kind of things up. And you know, one of these days I'm going to do a series on Wasp. I keep threatening that with everybody, and um, yeah, it's going to come to fruition. But um, but getting back to why I started it after I. After I was watching Pete's channel for a long time, you know, of course, I started watching the Martin Popoff stuff, which I'm like, who's Martin Popoff? I never knew who Martin Popoff was because you have to understand for about 20 to 25 years, I really was kind of away from the mainstream market. So I really didn't do a lot of investigating into journalism and people behind the scenes and stuff like that. So I didn't really know anybody of you know, I hadn't, the last person I really would have known anybody like that would have been Jerry Miller from Metal Edge Magazine. Mm -hmm. You know, if that tells you anything. So, so I found out who Martin Popoff, and then he starts talking about this contrarians. I'm like, contrarians, what's that? And I look up, contrarians, like, okay, I get behind this. So I get behind this. I start getting on some of their, their video chats and I start meeting people like Ryan, like Ryan Gavalier, like Grant Arthur like Reed Little, like yourself, through Ryan and Grant and them. Uh, Tyler Hagopian of, of uh, LP Tremors. Peter Kerr, of course, Rock the Dream Nation. Um, let's see. Uh, Don the Chaldean, John the Music Nut. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of others that I'm, I'm forgetting or I'm missing. Bicycle Legs would probably be another. Um, you know, there's, there's a number of people that I've got. Uh, Todd Evans. Gosh, well, I can't forget Todd <laughs> Evans. <laughs> Hello, forget cannot forget Todd Evans. Yeah. But, uh, you know, so there's a lot of cool people that I've got to meet through these Zoom chats. And I'm like, you know, this is pretty, this is, I mean, I've not met them in person, but I've met them through this. And this has just been so much fun getting to do this kind of stuff. So I just kept wanting to do it and wanting to do it. And then, you know, the bug, the bugs bit me. So, yeah. Now, and now, and now I've got a, my own little, group chat thing of my own with some friends that i've known for a few years that we're we're probably going to call wind up calling ourselves the north and south metal rock and metal connection so we 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 did an episode on 1986 and we're going to record an episode this coming week on 1976 so uh in which in which i have a new nickname so, i had a nick i had a nickname once around the early 2000s where i got called johnny metal mm -hmm. Which is a good nickname. I like it. That's pretty, pretty badass. Yep. But uh, but uh, you know, um, when we did the 1986, I'm like, okay, wait a second. You guys, two of you guys weren't even born yet in 1986, and one of you is only three. And I lived through all of that, so I got the nickname, the Metal Dad. Yeah, I I am going to be 53, folks. So. I, it fits the bill. I, I, I agree. I admit it, but so there you go. But yes, I get, I get the metal dad. So, but yeah, so this week we're going to be, uh, I'm going to get those guys together and uh, we're going to talk, uh, talk some 1976. And these guys were all guys from the DDP yoga program mm -hmm. that, uh, that I've gotten to meet a couple of them live, uh, a couple of them live here in Alabama. They actually live about two, two and a half hours away from me in a different part of the state. And the, the North connection comes from a guy up in uh, Canada. So, and he's a, he's a good, he's a, he's a good egg. Roger's a good egg. So is Ben and JD and his, and Ben's brother, Jason. They're all, they're all great guys. I, I really enjoy them. Um, I've hung out with, I've hung out with Ben a, a number of times. Um, Iron Maiden came to Atlanta and I sat with him and watched, watched Iron Maiden with him. So that was, that was pretty cool. So, uh, so we have a good rapport there as well, you know, that we've already had built in. So, um, but the rapport I've, I've developed with guys like you, with guys like Ryan and Grant and Todd 
and all those guys has, has really been great too. And I've just, it, it's just such a joy to do stuff like this. Yeah. Oh, I gotta get some water. Uh, you, you drink, I'll, I'll have her, don't worry. Um, that is the great thing about what we do, isn't it? It's the community yeah. aspect. It's um, the web and, and it keeps shooting off in different directions and you make new connections and mm-hmm. then that leads into something else. And personally, I've found that some of the things I've done that haven't taken off in terms of numbers have been the most interesting from a personal level or interesting from just getting to know other people level. Um, I mean, Ryan and I are doing all sorts of videos at the moment just because, not just at the moment, we're going to keep doing them just because we've got so much in common in terms of music mm-hmm. and movies and approach. And um, what I can do, Ryan can and vice versa. Um, and, and you're very similar. You have a very, I'd say you have a similar approach to someone like Taylor. Um, as, as you said, you just, when something occurs to you, you just think, I'm going to do that video. And that's very much where Tyler pr- approaches it as well. Um, is it always spur of the moment or do you do you have plans I mean obviously you'll plan for say the 76 thing you need to have an idea what you're going to say but do you yeah have, what, do you have general yeah. bit videos or when when I do the group stuff which I've only I've not done a lot of those but you know the 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 first one I did was was my wife and I together doing our top five Muppet songs you know obviously we did some prep into that because we watched all the eight theatrical Muppet movies and we made we took notes on all the songs that were in there, and then we we're like, okay, let's put our lists together. Let's and let's just let's the two of us just have some fun with that, you know, because we both were both Muppet fans, you know, and so it, that was it was a joy to do that from a different perspective, you know. Yeah, we know the movies, most of them probably some like that we know the back of our hand, but let's take it from an objective point of view. What's really our favorite songs? So that was that was a that was fun. That was a fun homework thing to do. Um, the love coma album where I had Grant and Reed and Todd or no Grant, Todd, uh, Peter, uh, and one other person that I can't think of, uh, that's awful. I can't remember who I had, on, who I had on that show now. Um, yeah, it just, just, that's escaping me at the moment. Um, anyway, you know, that was, I didn't re- prepare for that one, but I let them do it. Cause I wanted to hear what they had to say about the album. So, you know, that was fun. And the top the the Iron Maiden openers was, that was fun. Again, another fun project to do when you get those group things. That's when I put the work in when I'm doing the Victor Bono thing. I know that album. like, I mean, it's, it's so ingrained in my DNA. I knew I could just rattle off and just boop, go and just and hit record and be good. Um, now, when I plan this Wasp show, now, yeah, I'm going to put some thought into that because I want that to be a really good show because they've been my go-to band since 1985 for the most part. So I want that to be, you know, and if I'm going to do this, this with our other people, you know, I want to be on top of my game for this. Mm-hmm. So that's why I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to, to do something with it. But I'm going to get there. It's going it's to get there. But, uh, you know, for the most part, a lot of everything else is just like if, if the mood hits me, I just go. I mean, so. You don't want to get stung doing a wasp series. <sighs> mm, well, I hope not. I'd be, <laughs> I'd be, I would be crazy, uh, and I might make people scream. Okay, I'm just, I'm finding wasp song titles to, and I won't turn into a wild child on you. So. Yeah, good. because folks, this is the only time we're going to get wasp mentions in this channel. <laughs> <laughs> and I get, and I totally get why, and I totally get why. But uh, no, listen, my my guests talk about whatever they want to talk about. On the <laughs> so you you talk about wasp. Uh, oh, that's good. I mean, it's I, all good. It's fine. I've got the mute buttons. Um, <laughs> the, um <laughs> but you mentioned there. Um, that one of the first or the first collaborative video you did was on uh, Les Muppets um, with with Mrs. Mrs. C. Mm-hmm. Um, and first of all, it's clearly the Rainbow Connection at number one. Come on, come on, folks. Yep. Life's like a movie, write your own and then keep believing, keep written. We won't do that. I think we've already done mm-hmm. that. But there were right. we, with the whole of the song. Um, so that takes us into the realm, as does Victor, Victor Bono, of course, a star of Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, Batman 66, it's King Tut, 
uh, Beyond the Planet of the Apes, uh, Robin and the Seven Hoods, that takes us into another realm um, of which you're passionate to, film. Um, you're a horror film fan as well. Um, and film in general, is horror something you've always gravitated towards? I think I always gravitated towards, it took me a while to gravitate to the horror movies. I mean, mm-hmm. as a kid, I did watch like, you know, Bela Lugosi and Boris Karloff as Dracula and Frankenstein, of course, Lon Chaney Jr. as the, as the Wolfman. You know, so I did I did find those interesting, um, but like the really scary stuff, the pop scares, the jump scare type stuff. You know, I can remember being in like sixth grade watching Alien at my brother's house because I have a my just to give you guys a background. My bro, I have a brother who's 13 years older than myself and a sister who's 15 years old. So there's a big, big age difference between the two of us or the three of us rather. So I'm over at my brother's house watching Alien, you know, and of course that, you know, in sixth, seventh grade or whatever. And that chest bursting scene happens. I'm like, OK, bye bye. I'm done. <laughs> you know, I, it freaked me out. So. You know, and so I, 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 and I was, I was a little, I was a little squeamish watching uh, horror movies. It, it, I didn't want to watch a lot of stuff too quick. But uh, in time, I, I got better. You know, I would, I got, I went to see like Friday the Thirteenth Part Five and at a midnight movie one time. You know, we had, we had a, fr- I had, we had, I had a friend that uh, his dad was the general manager at a theater, and he gave me and me and his son and and uh, and my other friend. Uh, passes we, we we got into see friday the 13th new beginning so that was that was the first time i'd seen a friday the 13th movie in the theater so that was pretty cool um you know nightmare on elm street i'd watched as i'd watched at a guy's house and stuff like that so in time i got over i got over that hump um i dated a girl uh oddly enough the subject of the song that's on youtube by the way yeah um she liked horror movies like i think our first date to a movie was was jason lives <laughs> so so uh you know it was, so it was and it was just all it was all downhill from there i can i remember going to see the fly and hellraiser and all these different movies with her and it was just a blast but um so yeah so i kind of got into a lot of that kind of stuff and then i kind of drifted more towards uh you know as years went on then i started getting into unfortunately i kind of went into a the crap movie stuff, you know, the, you know, what's the only reason one watches a Linnea Quigley movie, for example, it's not, not for the blood, unfortunately, no, but you, you, you watch it. You, there's certain reasons you watch those certain movies. Not that I'm proud to admit that, but mm-hmm. I did that. I did that a lot in the nineties. That's the kind of stuff I, I tended to gravitate towards, but I liked a lot. You know, I liked the evil dead movie, the first evil dead. I didn't care. Seconds. Okay. I didn't care for army of darkness um i i found it just too cheesy um oh, you know so, yeah I, I i i back then i didn't i i just absolutely hated it uh and i still don't care for it but uh what, what i know that's i, I ending, that's contrarian but yeah, uh, what ending, i don't think it is contrarian it's evil dead too for the win for for almost everyone um what ending did you have do you remember was it the well the, you have to remember when i remember when army of darkness came out so the only thing that you the only thing you saw was the was the was the original ending was there was the was the what you saw in the theater yeah so we well, you know, always had a different one well i i didn't find that out until like mid 90s where a guy i knew had a bootleg version and he said why look there's this old ending or there's this, this uncut ending and they they talk about this something about he he slept too long and stuff like that so I thought, okay, that's that was that's kind of silly, but I just I don't know. I just I when it comes to horror movies, I don't tend to always like too too much cheese, you know. Like that's kind of why, like in the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, after a while, I started losing interest because they just got cheesier and cheesier and cheesier. So I kind of, although some of the kills are interesting, it just the, there's so much dialogue that was just so cheesy. It just it just took away from it. So for me, but. Uh, now, then I started. I started getting to a little bit of uh, you know. I, I explored like Suspiria, and I like I like that movie a lot. And uh, I, I would find pieces. I would find oh, Doctor Butcher, have, MD. You don't have to go to Texas for a chainsaw mask. Nope, nope, nope. But uh, you know, I, you know, I would just find these just some uh, blood feast. I'll, there's another. There's another one. I can remember seeing the the video box for you know, and, and you know who the old Her- Herschel Gordon Lewis movies and stuff like that. Yeah, so that's kind of where I went with that. Uh, 
in that genre. So I can't really say I'm a, a I, I don't really say I'm a horror aficionado per se. I have come to appreciate a lot more and I've taken time to watch a lot more of that kind of stuff. Now, thanks to like Shudder, you know, I've, I've been introduced to, you know, full car movies, for example, you know, and movies like, you know, I, I, I came across a couple of, uh, really oldie, but goodies that are no, again, probably nobody, not enough people probably knows about is like Loki's, you know, about the pastor who goes to, you know, he goes into like an old Russian, it's an old Polish, Ser- Serbian or Polish, uh, yeah, Russian is um, I think it's Romanian, maybe Romanian. Yeah, that's something like. But the the story behind that and and what you get with that story, I'm like, you know, the movie itself, I could probably get my my, my wife to watch it, but she'd probably be bored to death with it. Mm-hmm. But at least she wouldn't have to worry about being scary because she's not a horror person. But but she could watch the movie because it's really a beautiful shot movie. Yeah. There's some beautiful scenery in that movie. Uh, same with um, Will Zeka. Mm-hmm. It was another one that I really, I, I, I watched. I'm like, again, not many scares, but again, I'm like, I love the scenery and it was just beautiful scenery. And then, um, you know, and then, then you have Lepterico, which you have that goofy mm-hmm. noise that sounds like a, sounds like an ostrich and a peacock and a chimpanzee getting it on together or something. I don't know what the heck that, <laughs> that noise is, but, but that's about what it sounds like. But again, a fun little movie, you know, and I, I, I just kind of, you know, there's a lot more I could explore. I've, I've, I've love Argento. I love a lot of the Jalo movies. I think those are kind of stuff that gets you, you get you thinking a little bit, you know, I, 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 I guess I don't like a movie that just insults your intelligence. Mm-hmm. So that's probably why I didn't like army of darkness. <laughs> but then again, I'm, I'm also the same guy who watched a lot of porn in the, in the eight, in the nineties too. So again, I'm not, don't listen to me. I'm not a good judge on on movies and stuff. But you know, I I why I, I there was dumb reasons why I watched a lot of crap that I did, and then and then this that's not good move. It's not good reasons. But um, for, but I do for, I do like a lot of stuff that makes you think, though. Um, first of all, um, John and I will be doing um top ten porn films of the nineties, and um, we'll be doing that ranking. No, uh, we'll talk about it off air, John. Um, <laughs> So we're going to be going through um, plots, themes, you know. Exactly. So some of them yeah. Are I don't know if I can remember. I don't think I can remember enough titles. To... <laughs> I didn't watch it for the titles. There's some wonderful <laughs> Mexican Sten in those films. And, you know, uh, some, you know Dutch bad, angles dude. you would get. And phenomenal stuff. Uh, um, no, that, folks that, are... that honest, hey, that honestly is a is something I am very glad to be away from. Uh, just that whole, every, every... that whole you know, everybody has an addiction and that was, that one had me in deep. And that is, that's a tough one to overcome. You can, you can go through classes and you can go through rehab for drugs and alcohol, but boy, it's tough to get rid of a porn addiction. Yeah. You know, that's, there's nothing like uh, that's, that's hard. Cause you, you, you have those images in your head for the, for the rest of your life. So it's, and you know, it's, it's natural. Um, everybody, um, Everybody looks important. The, people are very pure into these things, but um, everything you've been on, every step in your life makes you who you are now. So there's no real re- need to kind of feel feel sorry for what you, what's made you. Yeah. Well, you haven't caused anybody harm by those actions, you know. So, um, <laughs> although, you know, if you do send me a list of some of the titles, I can definitely check them out and make sure that they are suitable. Then, uh, I don't think I can remember any of them. <laughs> we'll, we'll put the links in the description, folks. <laughs> um, I, I can get some good sponsorship at this one, John. That's a lucrative, lucrative industry. Yeah. Oh. So you mentioned a couple of things there. Um, I'm, I won't keep on with the porn jokes there. Uh, but um, can you revisit Alien? Now, you said that was one that freaked Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I can watch that. I, I can watch that all day long. I, I, I love that movie now. So so you don't have that, oh, or do you still remember being the young boy that goes, oh, or, or do you, can you? Oh, know, I, just... I mean, I can remember. I can, I can still remember it freaking me out as a kid, but I'm just like, well, you know, I was a kid. I, I was also the same kid who, when my sister would listen to Dark Side of the Moon, when all when all those clocks start going off in the beginning of time, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I would like run as far away as I could in the house because it scared it scared me. Yeah. To death. 
Uh, the waiting room in on Genesis is lamb lights down on Broadway yes. was another, was another, you have all these weird noises and all that, you know, and as a, as a little kid, that scared me, you know, even in church with the church organ, that, 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 that did something to me. Yes. It bothered me sometimes. The, the volume of it just bothered me for some reason. But, but as a, as a grown up Catholic, um, the, some of the hymns, I always thought were incredibly intense and scary. Oh, I mean, um, just, just the way they, just the way the organist would play them and not so much the lyrics. It's just, a, it was just the way, of, I mean, you know, again, I, I got over it yeah. in time, I, I but it just, them quite, I mean, it was, when is he coming? When or oh, when is he coming? The Redeemer. Was like, what was this about? And even, um, Carol of the Bells, you know, the dun 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 dun. dun. Mm -hmm. That's been yeah. a million horror Christmas movies because it has that intensity to it. It's, yeah, um, it does. it's always a kind of crossover between the the profound and the profane, if you will. Yeah, and um, that's that's uh, that very much does sum up the two aspects of of your life, you know, from from different ends. Um, yeah, and your journey as you've been through it. And I think, and I think, what finally cured me of that was when I started listening to Kiss. And they put you to sleep and you woke up, what? No, I just, for whatever reason, I just started listening to Kiss. And I guess as I was getting older, it the noises didn't bother me quite oh, yeah. so much. It didn't scare me quite so much. Yeah. You know, so, you know, I figure if I can look at these guys and not get scared, I guess I, Yeah. you know. You figure if I can listen to Kiss, I can listen to anything. I'm not a Kiss fan, John, I'm sorry. Well, you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I get, as a first grade, as a first yeah. grade boy, you know, in 1975, going into this department store with my dad, and I saw the Dress to Kill album, and I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. And I begged my dad to get the album for me, mm -hmm. and he did. He did. You know and, what? I think the reason they never worked. For, first of all, they never made it massive in the UK until Crazy Night. No. Um, Crazy Nights was a big seller, but only because of what movie had Crazy Nights. Uh, one of the big late eighties movies had it in it, and that was basically riding on the crest of that. And then Bill and Ted used their version of Argent's "God Gave Rock and Roll," um, and that became a hit. And that's it. That's all they've ever done here. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. Because to me, they were too cartoonish for the UK scene. They were too. Come on, we can see this is clearly just a, a you know, very Americanized. Uh, take on you know it's a cartoonish and everybody oh, yeah. knows that now when they grow up but as a kid they did have a spell over um oh over. as a as a kid that was they were like my heroes yeah i mean yeah, they, they were like my child they were literally my childhood heroes i mean you know i've shown this on many a video at time but you know this little mm -hmm. kiss army card that was you know i was a kiss army kid you know, my brother got me in and for, and I got, I got a certificate somewhere and, mm -hmm. you know, I wish I had the, the letters I got from it. I wish I still had some of that stuff, but, but I still have that little card. And, you know, I was, I was proud to be a kiss army. And when everybody in the world loved Elvis, I was the, I was the kiss fan in, in my elementary school and I waved that flag proudly, you know, but, um, uh, yeah, and I'm more, and I, and I never got to see them in concert until 1992. Well, I suppose at least you got to see them before the real decline. I mean, gosh, there's well, Gene Stiller. at least I, at least, but I did get to see, I did get to see the original four, original four twice, and I've never seen them since. It was the last time I saw them was was 25 years ago in 1997, and I just haven't had the heart to go back to see them since. Yeah, and from what I hear. You wouldn't really be hitting them anyway. Um, so, or if you did, you might be hitting something they recorded quite a few years earlier. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, no, thank you. Oh. Um, I, I like kids now more. Um, I like those live records, but I just I have to take myself away from the marketing and the the whatnot because I just find it so oh, it's so over the top. And uh, again. I think that the what cracked them in America is exactly what repelled the UK because people here just went, "This is just silly." What you know, Sl oh, yeah. Slade don't have a comic. Um, you know, T Rex don't have a comic. Um, yeah, Slade Slade had a hard enough time just being able to spell right sometimes. Oh well, you know, some of their spelling <laughs> quite, quite wonderfully vulgar though. Um, <laughs> I'm feeling the noise, anyone. Um, but the um, and then of course. Even here we had um, Zal Clemson from the uh, 
the sensational Alex Harvey. Alex Harvey, Harvey which, 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 which again, makeup. I was in that, that was another band that my, my brother listened to and got to see in concert. And I'm oh. like, Ugh. yeah, if I, mean, I, that would, that's a time machine thing for me. If I could go back in time with him to have seen him in, in our little town of Nerd, where I grew up in here, North, I live in Alabama, but I, I grew up in Northampton, Pennsylvania, and we had this little theater, maybe held, held about 700,000 people or something like that. And they played at this little theater in Northampton, Pennsylvania. Oh, my gosh. My brother doesn't have a whole lot of memories of the show, unfortunately. You know, I mean, we're going on 45 years or more now, but I mean, he was probably also a little, little, little tipsy at the time, too. So that's always a possibility. Yep. But uh, sorry, Chet, for talking about that. But uh, but I mean, he, my brother got to see the sensational Alex Harvey band. And I'm like, ah, oh, <laughs> twice. I, I thought it was only once. He said he got to see him twice. Yeah. Yes, he uh, told me that recently. I'm like, oh, they are icons in Glasgow. Yes, and, I, um, absolutely. You still absolutely. Get, you still get graffiti on walls saying Vambo rules. And Alex, yes. Alex has been dead for 40 years. It's nuts. Oh yeah, absolutely nuts. Um, but yeah, and I think Zhao gave us that clown persona, um, and it was much scarier than Kiss. So when Kiss came over, it was like, yeah, we've, we've got Zhao. We don't need this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, if, if there's a there's a live video I came across of them of them doing Midnight Moses at some festival, and they get some close up shots of Zhao, and he's got this like. Yeah, this really yeah. evil grin on his face. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that's freaky. Yeah. But man, what a, I'm, I'm like, holy crap, that was such a good version. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen to that thing. Man, those, I mean, Chris Glenn and Ted McKenna were just locked in tight as a drum. Zal was just riffing like crazy. You got Hugh on the, on the keyboards mm -hmm. and you had, you had Alex, you know, being Bon Scott and Johnny Rotten before Bon Scott and Johnny Rotten were. I mean, man. Yeah, I mean, what a I mean, what a show that could that had to have been for anyone who isn't aware of the Sabs. Um, Alex Harvey would do a version of "Framed" by the Coasters, and he would come out on alternate nights dressed as either Jesus Christ, I was <laughs> framed. Yeah, and he would come out the next night dressed as Hitler, doing "I was framed." Mm -hmm. and so Alex was yeah. very much a. Who can we antagonize tonight, kind of guy, um, which really which, resonates with me. Which you know, it, it, and you listen to you listen to songs like like uh, like "Give My Compliments to the Chef." Yeah, yeah. What in the world is that song about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have absolutely no clue, but that song is freaking amazing. I love that track. Is is, know, there, is that a bad idea for the song than? The Christmas lights aren't working because they're currently burning someone in the electric chair and they're using up all the electricity. Oh, there's, yeah. There's no lights on the Christmas tree, mother. They're yeah. burning big Louie tonight. Yeah. What? <laughs> Nuts. Or, uh, uh, you know, another one is, uh, you know, the when they get a little socially conscious on, on the Tomorrow Belongs to Me album that, mm -hmm. you know, and another tree dies of shame. Yeah. I just, that's a great line. I love it. I love it when he sings that line. Or, or when they um they actually did truly beautiful music, which people don't associate. Anthem, oh yeah, anthem is probably the best example. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there's yeah. so much. They were just so it, overlooked and so underrated. Yeah, yeah. you know, and Alex, uh, Alex is. I would. I would love. That would actually be somebody I would love to do a show on again. I would love to go through the his his discography sometime. It's someone who I, I've been talking about. Uh, for a while doing my favorite um Scottish acts and Scottish albums and whatnot. So I'd be, and I'd be thinking about having different guests for that. So I'd love to have you on to talk about your favorite oh, I, I, Alex I would Harvey. love to talk about Alex Harvey. Yeah. So but oh, uh we'll, we'll definitely show I, I I have to give you one last story on Alex Harvey and and because you'll love this. So when my brother did get to see him the one time, there was a, there was one little catch you had to have for the show. You had to have this show, this shirt that glowed in the dark. There was a, speci a, spe a specific shirt. I don't remember what it, if it said anything or what was on it, but or he doesn't he doesn't remember it either. But it had to glow in the dark. Well, people were like, "Well, I can't get the shirt, but we got this T-shirt guy. We he he can make the shirt. The only problem was he couldn't get it to glow in the dark. 
Yeah. So <laughs> you you might have the ticket, but if you, your shirt didn't glow, you couldn't get into the show. And so my brother, but my brother was able to somehow get one from somebody. He was, that's how he was able to get in. But, uh, I, I, I need to tell, I need to see if he, how much he remembers of why the, why everybody had to have the glow in the dark shirt and stuff like that. But, but, uh, that is, that, that is possibly the most Alex Harvey story I've ever heard because people get turned <laughs> away from restaurants for not having a shirt. If it's a posh restaurant, nightclubs, if they're wearing trainers and it's, you know, trying to be smart, casual, mm -hmm. Alex Harvey, if you ain't wearing a glow in the dark t-shirt, you can piss off. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. Go figure. But, uh, yeah, I'd love to, I wish my, I hope, I wish my brother would know, could remember more of the story. Yeah. Of what was behind it. And and I wish I could find some information on Google about it, but I don't that's not something you could find about. One of the so, one of the lessons I learned in my early twenties um was I would stop uh, partaking of uh, anything legal and otherwise uh, when it comes to gig going because I realized I was paying for concerts and having a great time and then not remembering anything about it. not a sausage. Um, it's just money mm -hmm. down the drain. So yep, yeah, yep, yeah. I, I I've never gone to a concert buzzed or stoned, or I I don't I've never did drugs or any of that kind of stuff. But and I and I but I've never gone to a concert drunk or or tipsy or anything like that. No, I wanted to remember everything about mm -hmm. as much as I could about the shows, you know, and because that's you know I, I want to take those memories with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to have just the shirt to remind me of that of that show i want to have some memories from it yeah you know like somewhere i have somewhere i have a dime bag pick that i got from when i saw pantera once in concert yeah. so that's that's a memory you can't buy is it that's unreal yeah. no i wish it was after he played a lick but no he just threw a bunch of picks up in the air and i just hey. happened to grab one but <laughs> hey i got nobody, one so nobody can prove otherwise john nobody can prove otherwise that's right that's right <laughs> Um, you also mentioned to go back to movies. You mentioned folk quarter there. Um, my my uh, rundown of of um, releases of the year last year. My number one was Severin's box set folk quarters, and um, which had fifteen from all over the world. Okay, um, and it's very much a genre that's close to my heart because my my favorite horror film of all time is Blood and Satan's Claw. Uh, okay total masterpiece right um, and obviously the wicker man with the scottish connection is very close to my heart as well um is you mentioned um that that's a genre that you tend to be more interested in now when it comes to horror uh, so do your tastes uh, they obviously evolved from film have they done the same in music do you think um like you've oh i, I need to put away that kind of thing now because i'm more um, this or do you can you mix and match or do you sometimes go I'm just beyond that now. Well, I mean, there's like, well, let's take Wasp, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I like the song Animal? No. As a 15 year old, heck yes, I was all over that song. But by the time the Headless Children came out, mm -hmm. I drifted away from stuff like, 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 like Animal, like Ball Crusher, Sex Drive, you know, the more sexist stuff. Mm -hmm. I liked more of what I heard on Headless Children. I wasn't so crazy about Mean Man or uh, or songs like that, and I don't even. I, and I, I and nowadays I don't. I, I kind of skip over his version of the real me, um, but uh, but I liked Blackie going in a more serious tone, and that's kind of where I was heading in my music in the '90s. You know, I was listening to a lot of Slayer, a lot of. Uh, uh, I was listening to like Malaya Rage was another thrash band. I was listening. To, I was listening to Pantera. Yeah, I started getting into the grunge scene a little bit with Soundgarden and Alice in Chains. And, you know, per, the Pearl Jam 10, 10 album was about as far as I got with Pearl Jam. Um, trying to think, what else was I listening to back then? Um, um, but really, for the most part, uh, I kind of stuck with what I knew and what I really liked. You know, I liked I liked Zeppelin a lot. And I was listening to, uh, the, like, White Snake cover. You know, Steve... I was listening to a little bit of everything, but I was never like a, a huge fan of anything particularly, I guess. I, I, that's probably the best way I can really describe it. Um, so nowadays, I don't, I don't care for the more sexist stuff. That, that stuff doesn't do much for me. You know, as, as a near 53-year-old, I'm like, yeah, it, it, was, it was great when I was a teenager, but not so much now. Um, 
I still find myself listening to a lot of the stuff that I listened to in the eighties, you know, um, only because I, I like listening to it in the car, but most of what I would listen to now would be, uh, I mean, let's see what, what is, what kind of stuff do I have on my, on my phone here. So let's see, we have albums. We have, uh, aha's MTV unplugged album. Martin. gotta love that gotta love that gotta love that slow version of take on me yeah, so there's Martin, something that's heavy. phenomenal voice ah uh, um uh the the new a to z album with ray alder and, mm-hmm. and mark zonder that's a great album mm-hmm. um i've got the new acdc album the power up which i i really like that album um alan parsons project mm-hmm. tales of mystery imagination love that of you know i think it was i think it was sydney taylor who had coined the phrase the only thing i've ever gone chris allo over and that's that album is actually one that I have gone the most Chris Allo over, and I have a video on, a, on it on my music corner. Uh, let's see, I have Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. Uh, I've got a lot of April Wine because I've been doing that show with Grant. Um, I have a Christian singer named Ashley Cleveland, blues singer, a kind of a bluesy voice, great, great singer. Uh, becoming the Archetype, who was they were they're another kind of a Christian thrash. Uh, they were they had all kinds of stuff but man i I saw those guys those guys live a lot of times and got to know them a little bit um and just crushing live um i have the bgs children of the world yeah you know i could keep going because there's there's, i have a lot of crap on my phone or a lot of good stuff on my phone i even have i even i i even have i even have i even have celtic frost cold lake on my phone well brilliant what year was that Bee Gees record? 19, uh, the, oh, the Bee Gees record? Yeah. Uh, 1976. So you're talking 10 minutes before they became the biggest band in the world. Pretty. Yeah, because that album, because that's that has You Should Be Dancing Yeah. Uh, amongst uh, a few others. But I mean, I had that as a, I, that was another album that I had as a kid, you know? So uh, what else was on that? Uh, Can't Keep a Good Man Down, Boogie Child, uh, Love So Right. So, you know, I, I don't remember what else was big hits back then, but. But I mean, uh, you know, so my, my BGs are the earlier ones. I do love uh, first, oh, first oh, of, like that. First of May is one of my favorites. Right. Yeah. I, which I've never, I've never, I've never explored that really, really early BG stuff. Oh, you know, I, cause I, because I, th- I think of, uh, you know, I think about um, the, the first Genesis album, mm-hmm. Gen- you know, and, and how, and how the, they said a couple songs has that early BGs feel oh. to it. Yeah. which you know that, that that was what they you know they said like there was a or there was one song they did that somebody said yeah hey, this kind of reminds you of a Bee Gees feel i can't remember I, well, what, no, I, what I song they that, said it was i think that's a it's true but it's it's saying that it's perhaps not as good as as the beat because the Bee Gees were phenomenal from their first oh albums, um, absolutely yeah insanely and, um, and there's certainly and there's certainly good reasons why Genesis doesn't play anything from that first album in 50 years. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's okay. It is, a, it is what it is, but no, no, you're not, you're not going to hear in the beginning. You're not going to, you weren't going to hear that in at the last Genesis show. That just wasn't going to happen. Yeah, not, not least of which, unfortunately, the, uh, their head on show at the time was Jonathan King, who, uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Jonathan King, people who don't know, yeah, you don't want to know what Jonathan King was in jail for. So um, no. there's probably a good reason, even apart from the music, why they wouldn't want to. Um, no. Peter Gabriel certainly never going to go back to any of that stuff. Anyways, he's never going to finish off a show with uh, Supper's Red or anything. <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, bless although, him. I, although I think there's a lot of people who would love to hear him do it, that. You know, it's something that he raised, because um, he obviously gets asked a bit in interviews all the time about... Um, obviously, would you have gone on, you know, done a guest shot with Genesis for the last two and that kind of thing? And they said, well, number one, no, because look at it from from their point of view. I was in the band for a few years and they've been together for, you know, for that point, not far off yep. 50 is that. Oh, they were they were together. I mean, it was 45 years since they he left. Yeah. Um, so. so, you know, and they were together for like six before that. I mean, you know, it's not really mm-hmm. a long time. Huh. Um, and he also said... You have to remember that that music would mean nothing to to the kind of crowds that they pull, uh, you know, a, a big stadium crowd 
no. would be sitting watching the lamb going, what the, this is not, you know, this is not um, Jesus he knows me and this is not um, uh, Duke and this isn't invisible touch. And, sure. Et cetera, and, sure. Well, it's like, hey, it, it to me, it's like, it's like the Wasp bands. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody just wants to hear Chris Holmes and nothing else. They don't want to hear anything from, uh, you know, the Neon God albums or Dying for the World or Unholy Terror, Babylon, you know, Dominator, Gol- or certainly not Golga, because, mm-hmm. you know, they. I'm, I, I know a lot of diehard Wasp fans were like, what? Why is he singing Jesus, I Need You Now? Yeah. What? What? You know, you know, I'm sure a lot of fans were, were I wasn't. I, mm-hmm. I was like, yes, mm-hmm. it sent chills down my spine. But. But if but there's so many Wasp fans, all they want to hear is that Chris Holmes there and nothing else. Yeah. Well, there's there's a lot of Genesis fans. They could care less for anything after Steve Hackett left. Mm-hmm. But you know, uh, but they, you know, but uh, you know, and and Steve and Steve Hackett is great for carrying his era on. He's doing it. Yeah, he's out there. But is his air is his show ever going to fill a stadium like Genesis does? Nope. No. 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 Um, and he's going to, he's brilliant though. Um, if people have the chance to see Steve Hackett, he comes yeah. out after the gig, you'll sign everything you have. Um, Which is cool. Lovely guy. Um, I've got a couple of signed things from him. Um, you need to keep him in hair dye, folks, so support Steve directly. Um, he's a lovely chap. Um, yeah. The, it, you're right, it does have a, a resonance throughout music where, um, very rarely do, does an artist kind of keep that that earlier if they've they've come in to play a second fiddle for a while. Very rarely do they keep that that one song. I mean, I'm thinking of Bruce Dickinson still sings Iron Maiden, um, and the only song they only, they only closed they only they've only closed that song with that show you know every show since they yeah. began. So so, so he doesn't throw that <laughs> because it's Paul, um, and also the, um, the Klansman has been kept in the set from the blade and, you know. and sign of the cross as well yeah um, but that, that made it it's very limited marillion's kind of the same um steve hogarth for the first couple of years did have to do kaylee and lavender didn't like doing it um but now he does it at the marillion fan fests and it's more of a pleasure because they've got such a big back catalog that it's almost a novelty for him now yeah john anderson wouldn't touch anything from drama mm-hmm yeah, you know Rob Halford won't touch the 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 Ripper era era song. Well, that's albums. probably smart. I mean, drama. I would love to hear. Um, oh, I would but, love to have heard John Anderson tackle something um, from that. Because, but uh, because Trevor's never been on the road since the drama tour. He's never been a tourer. Um, no. So nobody's out there doing drama, unfortunately. And drama is my favorite. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, yes, did a, a tour where where they did do the album its entirety, yeah. but I mean, but this is after Chris Squire passed away. Yeah, and it was with uh, with John Davison, which he yeah. which he's fine. You know, I saw them in concert, and John was fine. Yes, I would have liked to have seen with John Anderson. Yes, I got to see Chris Squire, mm-hmm. maybe a little too up more up close and personal than I really wanted to, because yeah. I was at the I was actually front row for the show. Which kudos to my wife for scoring those tickets, but I was literally like me to my computer screen to from Chris Chris Squire and his pants were just a little too tight. So I'll just leave it at that. <clears throat> anyway, um so but it was a great show. I mean they did close to the edge. They did the yes album. They did going for the one in its entirety. And it's I thought it sounded really good. I thought everybody sounded good. But that's just me. Anyway, that was a different tangent. But yeah, I certainly see where you're where you're coming from. And do you um do you plan obviously you've got the videos with, with the guys do you have any ideas what kind of things you want to shoot for do you or do you just look at something on the shelf and go today what do you, how do you, you know, i have done that or do you have a vague notion of i'll, I'll get to you eventually just not yet that kind yeah of i mean i i mean the wasp thing obviously is that's, that's a, i'm gonna get to you and we're gonna do this right but you know like the victor bono thing that was a spur of the moment thing um, I had to gather up all the Alan Parsons tales from the imagine from of mystery and imagination together so I could show all that off. Um, I mean, I could I could look over my CD collection over that I'm looking at. I'm like, you know, um, well, Butch Jones talks about John Sykes a lot, so we won't talk. We 
Blue Murder gets talked about enough, so now nah, let's not talk about that. Um, oh, I don't know. Malaya Rage. There's a thrash band from from the Boston, Massachusetts area. Not who who talks about the band Malaya Rage? Do you probably don't even know who Malaya Rage is? But I know that's him, a band. I know who Mahalia Jackson is. It sounds really okay. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> so so I get so Malaya Rage. You know, I somebody at a record store back in around late 1988. Said, man, we we just got this album. Look at this gross album cover. And they showed it to me. I'm like, that's awesome. I bought it. Fell in love with the album. Still one of my favorite albums to this day. I I got the rest of their catalog. I just haven't spent the kind of time with it, which I need to. It, but unfortunately, they're a little from what people said. It's kind of spotty. It's not. There's probably reasons why they never got to be very big. Um, but that would be somebody I would love to talk about. Uh. You know, I, Raven. I don't think enough people talk enough about Raven. I love Raven. I think they're a great. I, I when I first heard Live in the Inferno, I thought that was an. Uh, I love the energy of that album. You know, um, uh, and I and, and as goofy as it sounds, I love the pack is back. Mm-hmm. I like the title track, especially maybe not so much the rest of the album, but I love the pack. I love the title track. Um, but I I've come to love a lot of their material. Um, you know, so that would be another. I would. I would go into my Christian roots and talk about, you know, maybe Rich Mullins or uh, a little duo called Out of the Gray, maybe, uh, you know, bands, bands, you know, these just these Christian bands that that nobody knows about. But I, have you know, when I started listening to more Christian music late in the 90s, that was that was what I started listening to more of because I that's where I went to. I, I, I went more into Christian music and I got away from the secular mainstream music for a long time so there was probably a good i'm gonna say almost 10 15 years before i started getting back into mainstream music again you and know is there, um is there any point um and believe me um as much as and we've discussed it in private as well i'm not mm-hmm. a, a believer but i'm a spiritual person in different ways in terms of just you know i have a more universal outlook um in terms of the, the, the goodness of humanity is what I kind of believe in, which I guess is soulful in a different way. Um, but mm-hmm. do you ever find that you have trouble rectifying any music with your own personal beliefs in, in religion b- because some of it intentionally in a lot of cases was pushing against uh, religion and Christianity yeah. especially? I mean, some of it, yes. I mean, but that's just, like I, I don't go listening to Slayer or Hello Waits like I used to. You know, that was, you know, I would say that was always my my favorite Slayer album, for example. You know, but I don't I don't listen to that much, if at all. You know, if I do, it's just because I want to let some steam on. Yeah. Um, I don't listen to like King Diamond. I don't listen to Deicide or Merciful Fate or, you know, I, I don't gravitate to any of that, any of that kind of stuff. I, I'm, I never was a black metal fan. So bands like Venom and Possessed and stuff like that i never i never got into because i never could take them seriously um you know i i really i i sometimes am kind of picky about what i listen to uh to some degree um i if if i can i don't try to justify it i just say you know if 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 makes me if i can appreciate the music and i can still appreciate the because a lot of these uh, let's let's face a lot of these legacy bands mm. not everybody is doing the same old stuff mm. you know you're not you're not hearing the you're you're thank god we're not hearing um wasp doing animal part two or we're not hearing well maybe rat's still gonna do a uh you're in love or or uh round and round or any of those kind of songs maybe that's still their thing but you know i, I just I, I do kind of pick and choose a little bit and I don't try to, I don't try to justify myself, you know, with where my faith is. Um, I, I know at the end of the day, when it comes to what I believe in, I know, I know without God, I am nothing, you know, pure and simple. And that's- he, he came in, he, and I, and I promised you, I had a Jimmy, I, I had a Jimmy Stewart. It's a wonderful life story. 
and I want to. I'm going to tell it to you right now. Well, well, J- Johnny, why, why don't you, you tell the folks the Jimmy Stewart story? So, so, so the reason I I say that without God I'm nothing is at the end of at, uh, it was Christmas Eve, 1997. Mm-hmm. Okay, and I had I had been the last few the previous few months had been a very dark time for me. Um, I had been previously married and things happened that reality just went off into realms that I had never wanted to go into and things just happened and bad decisions were made, you know, and to which for years I would live with the guilt and the shame of what I dealt with. So Christmas Eve comes along and I had a friend and I had a friend through what I did for work at the time. And I said, hey, does so-and-so church have a Christmas Eve service tonight? And they were like, yeah, what time? 7-Eleven. What, which ones are you guys going to? Seven. All right, I'll see you there. Okay. You know, they were kind of surprised because they knew my history with that. So I went and I enjoyed a beautiful Christmas Eve service. You know, it was wonderful. I, I didn't hear Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and, and let it snow, let it snow. And, you know, and all those goofy songs that you hear at Christmas time. You know, I heard the Oh Come All Ye Faithful, Oh Little Town of Bethlehem, The Way in the Manger, and all the beautiful Christmas songs. Yeah. You know, the, the 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 sacred songs. So when I got home, usually my Christmas Eve tradition was to put on Scrooge with Albert Finney, mm-hmm. which is probably one of my, even though it's not the most faithful of Christmas Carol versions, it's probably one of my favorites because I love the music. Yeah, I always, thank, I always thank loved you very it. much for all you've done for me. Oh, me. Yeah. Great song. I love that song. Um, you know, the, the, the tiny Tim track just, just, just breaks me, just breaks me up all, every time I hear it. I went to look for it and like, sure enough of all the things that my, unfortunately my ex took a bunch of stuff with her and she snagged that one, unfortunately. So I was like, well, I guess I'm going to have to, I got to watch something. It's Christmas Eve for crying out loud. So I got to put something on. So I had It's a Wonderful Life. I put that in the old VCR. Well, I got about halfway through and I'm starting to get kind of tired. Oh, I thought I'm just going to go on to bed, wake up Christmas morning. And I don't know what I was going to do with myself Christmas morning, but I, was, I woke up and went down, you know, you know, and maybe I'll just watch the rest. But then, well, my job that I had started, I, I usually got up about four o'clock in the morning because we, we opened this, we opened our doors at six o'clock. And we were, we, we were a wholesale outfit. So we had to get our trucks out early in the morning. So I was already up at like three, four o'clock in the morning. So I go downstairs. I had a couple cats at the time. I had a little Christmas tree with a couple Christmas gifts that were given to me from guys at work and I, you know, just random nothing stuff. And, and I put the movie back, you know, I just press, turn the TV on, press play, you know, picked up right where it left off. VCRs folks got to love it. And so and I just finished watching the movie. You know, we get to the point where, you know, we're watching George Bailey go through life with with uh, after he's wished his life away and he didn't he wanted to see what life was like without him and how life was different. You know, I just kept watching it. I would go back to the Christmas tree and see my cats sitting up underneath there. And back to the movie and we'll go back and forth watching. And it's just like every time I kept doing this, this tennis thing, I just. I just started crying more and more and more because I realized I'm watching myself. I'm watching myself on the screen because I, at that point in my life, I was ready to just go walk up the highway, find a speeding tractor trailer. And I just was ready to step out in front of it and let it run me over. That's just where I was in my life. That's how, that's how far gone I had let my life go. And just because of some very bad decisions I was making. And I was like, I just looked to the heavens. I'm like, okay, God, I get it. You put me on this earth for good, bad, or indifferent. You put me on this earth for a reason. Take me. I'm yours. Do with me as you wish. So I, I got the, I, that's, that's where it got. That's where it, that's, that's my Jimmy Stewart. Not maybe not Jimmy Stewart directly, yeah. but that's where, and here's the, here's the, the other ironic part. Since that day, I have never watched It's a Wonderful Life since. <laughs> I can't bring um, myself to do it for whatever reason. But Yeah, and John, maybe you don't need it now. 
and that's why maybe you no did, maybe. I, I have a i have a copy of on on dvd yeah no but for whatever reason i just haven't i've never had yeah. the heart to put it in just to know it's there's maybe enough for you yeah um just to know that, that but uh um, but that's that's my jimmy stewart it's a wonderful life story so the reason uh, why the expression is you have a come to god moment and it, you know there was um everybody everybody and i believe everybody will have one in their life in some way shape or form i mean you know again i'm not a believer in any theistic sense but right. i have had those kind of moments and i've had those really dark days mm-hmm. i've had those epiphanies where something saved me someone saved me yeah. Um. And it it is it is the most powerful feeling, and and you aren't ever the same again. Yeah. Um, and every yeah. every time you just pick up a bit more kindness and a bit more empathy. Mm-hmm. Um. And just like um, I mean, obviously I didn't know you back in the day, but just like George Bailey, um, you are a thoroughly decent human being. Um, I try. No, I'm, you know, this is the bit where I have to embarrass you, John, and say when your name comes up between everybody discussing, you know, what videos and whatnot, your name is always in glowing terms. Um, everybody's uh, reverential, um, if you pardon the... the uh, yeah. I appreciate that. Um, Thank you. Um, because, because, yeah. your, your PayPal do- donation will be coming shortly. Thank you. Um, I don't even have a feature on my channel. I'm too modest. Um, but no, uh, you have that... Um, um, just decency and that's a very George Bailey thing and very Jimmy Stewart thing actually as well just to have um, it's, it's um, to go to go, I mean I, I did a whole month of Jimmy Stewart videos uh, one every day nearly killed yeah. um, and so I'm well versed but there's there's a bit of the, the Mr. Smith goes to Washington in you as well that you know always look out for the other film and mm-hmm. um, there's a bit of Harvey uh, well not the Harvey himself because that's the rabbit but then, you know that's, there's a bit of Elwood P. Dowd from Harvey um, you know um, just that that just common decency kindness um, you know it doesn't need to be grandiose gestures all the time we can't save save the world sometimes it's just enough to clean up the neighborhood isn't it yeah and you know and do i do i screw up absolutely i do mm-hmm. i i am far from a par- perfect person you know i certainly have made my share of mistakes i've done i continue to do stupid things sure i lose my temper at work you know who doesn't yeah. you know i i wish i i wish i was a i wish i couldn't lose my temper i wish i was a, a completely even keel person all the time but I just, it's just, I'm not that person. And I admit that I have my faults, you know, but if I was, if I was perfect, I wouldn't be here. (laughs) You know, that, that's how I look at it, you know? And yeah, but, uh, perfect person who thinks they're perfect, uh, probably ain't, are they? So far from it. Uh, I mean, I don't think I know it. Um, (laughs) <laughs> you have to throw in that, you know, break the tension oh, yeah. a little bit when things are things are going a little bit. Um, John, this is this has been absolutely singularly deep, fun. Like every time I speak to you, John, I feel like I, I learn something about um um and I will say spirituality. Uh, I feel like just you ooze that, and it's, in your case, it is obviously Christianity, but you do ooze that spiritual feel and just that kind of serenity and calmness that comes with it. That um, that you can, you know, God grant me the serenity to accept it, and etc. Et cetera. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Trust and, me, I pray for that every day yes, when I walk into my store. <laughs> and what an attitude to have, because you're right. We all do these minor stumbles every half hour of every day where we oh gosh oh man. you know I was, I was a little bit cheeky to someone there and i didn't really mean to and you go back and apologize you know uh, and it's those kind of moments to make you just a bit more human um and it's it's your your it's a wonderful life moment that probably makes you more aware of them in the first place and in your case it's literally saves your life so yeah do you know i yep. will i will thank god for it um I don't know if there's anything out there, John, but um, if there is, then sincerely thanks, thanks to the to the big lady up there. Um, I'm I'm, a, I'm going with a feminine god, uh, um, but yeah, thanks to her um, for 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 doing that for you um, and 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 giving us some more John Clouser because 
just like George Bailey, um, the world would be a hell of a potter's town if we didn't have John Clouser kicking about. So. Yep. Well, I, I, I'm glad to know that somebody thinks that. So it's, it's, well, it's, I appreciate you know, that. I'm, I'm sure you you continue to take Alabama by storm down there. Um, I mean, that was me being terrible and nasty, John, but I do want to say I thoroughly dislike you for a specific reason. And I'm, I do mean thoroughly. Um, okay. <laughs> and I, we will end on this because it's uh, I might lose my temper thinking about it. And uh, No, I'm, I'm being quite serious here. I, I actively dislike this about you, John. Every single Sunday, you make me the hungriest person on earth. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> John, John, as mentioned, born in PA, um, but now lives down where the stars fell in Alabama. Um, yep. And um, he has, of course, that great southern southern food that they have down there. Every single Sunday, John posts a meal, a picture of his Sunday brunch, I take it it is, John, mm-hmm. on Facebook. And by God, first of all, every single one looks like a walking heart attack. The second of all, <laughs> they all look like you'd be perfectly happy with that heart attack. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so delicious looking. Yeah, yeah. The Anvil, the, it's called the Anvil Pub uh, here in Birmingham. It's a locally owned place. They started right about the time the pandemic hit. So that was, timing was a little off for it, unfortunately. But uh, the idea was that they wanted to give a British pub feel with a southern a southern flavor to it so that's kind of the idea so uh so a lot of the stuff that they do on their sunday brunch is maybe not necessarily so much british flavor you know british item type stuff but it's a lot of just 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 crazy ideas that from all kinds of different parts of the world really but but it's just some of the sandwich stuff yeah it, it's probably a heart attack waiting to happen but Whoa. some of that stuff is so good mm-hmm. um you know, I, I, they, they have a very, they do actually have a very good fish and chips. I, one of these days I will get to, to England. I will actually try a, an authentic uh, fish and chips from, from jolly old England, but. Uh, Never mind England, John. Scotland's where it's. Well, Scotland's, Scotland's really where to go. Yeah. And, um, I, and I, and, and I certainly, and I certainly would like to go come to Scotland. I, I want to visit, visit everywhere in the, in the UK. We have I mean, the North Sea. But I would love, I would real, love to go to the. The real fishing is up in the North Sea. So. Okay. That's, yeah, that, that's, so that's good here. to know. Yeah. Don't English go for their cod. You don't want any of that nonsense. Come up here oh, and okay. have, some, have some Scottish trout and some, some haddock. Oh, okay. Mm, Let's go for that. Some langoustines, those are like massive king prawns. Um, Ooh, okay. Yeah, huge, absolutely massive. Take your arm off, steal your house. And and I wouldn't be, and I wouldn't be, I I, I would have to have a, some kind of a Scottish ale of some sort. Oh yes, yes. We will so and I'm, and I'm sure you will steer me in the right direction of, and probably get me because I because I can only do one, one and I'm done. After after one, I'm pretty much put. So you do, John, so it's just one bottle of whiskey each, um, and then. Well, it's like it's like it's like the picture of the beer I sent you yesterday. That's like a seven point two, and I I'm trust me, I'm feeling it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This 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 teetotaler feels it after one of those things because I just don't. That's not. Move, I, I'm move not an decimal, alcohol guy. Move the decimal point along, and you'll find some of the booze we have over here. So. Oof. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, mm. I, I think I think I saw online that the, the I think the the heart the he, the highest one is is I think somewhere in the UK I can't remember which one, but it was like a fifty or sixty percent. Yep, like something dragon venom or there's uh, dra- dragon soup uh, venom, something like that. Yeah. I, I I was like, ooh, I can't imagine what that tastes like. Well, the wonderful thing about that is, and I have partaken, is they also, they also put in quite a lot of caffeine into it. So the, Ooh, okay. the, the alcohol hitch is a downer and then the, al- the caffeine hitch is an upper. So ah, rather okay. strange sensation, um, which hmm, to be honest, I'm not 100% comfortable with because it's very popular amongst teenagers. And I don't think, you know, hmm, yeah. I'm not, I'm a bit more prudish in my old age when it comes to, hmm, you know, do as I do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, um, no, I, I, but I was I would just like to say, hey, whatever it is, I wanted to say I tried something and mm-hmm. I just had fun with it. You know, that's that's the that would be the the important part. Yes, that's and uh, the power of self forgiveness sometimes is, uh, is 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 absolutely 
key here, not just to any kind of spirituality, but even just to your own um, to your own mental health. And, and yeah. It's uh, absolutely key, the power to, to be able to say to yourself, what does that matter in the grand scheme of things? I'm just, you know, who, who's really been hurt here? If anyone, what can I do to make it better for them? So, yep. yeah, so. as always, John, this has been a wonderful trip around the houses. Not many, not many videos um, do I ever think. I bet you I can go on to this and we'll talk some wasp. We'll talk John Hurt's, John Hurt's chest exploding. We will talk... Um, God himself, herself, coming down to save you um, on, on your darkest hour. Um, and we'll bring it down to some southern fruit, uh, southern fried foods and 60% booze in the UK. So that, that is something that's up, John. It's, it's, it's a hodgepodge. You never know what you're going to get sometimes. Yes, um, we are many. We are legion. We, we contain multitude. Um, so... John, an absolute pleasure and a privilege to have you on. Thank you. Um, Appreciate it. We this was a blast. Now that you've said so, I think you and I are going to be talking some Alex Harvey again on this here channel. So. I, well, I'm ready. I, 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 I'll I, get myself ready to do it sometime. Yeah. yeah I got, God. I've, I've got all the albums on my phone. I want to, I'll, I'll be listening to them. Brilliant. Um, but don't worry, I'm not one of these. Okay, get your diet out, John. Uh, we will be fine. Don't worry. And if I get a vinyl, if I ever get a record player, I can actually listen to the album without Alex, just to hear, just to say I heard it. But uh, four play, even though it's not, yeah, four play, which I know it's not a good album, but I just want to say at least I heard it. So it's still okay for the musicianship, obviously, because those are all consciences and um, uh, all they're all great guys. You know, um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, it's just, had... it's just a shame. It's just a shame we don't have three of them anymore. Yeah. I mean, we, we have. We don't well, we don't have Alex and we don't have the McKenna's, but we still at least we still have Zal, we still have Chris, but of course Zal's not playing anymore. He's retired again. So yeah. Um I've seen I've seen Zal quite a few times um in concert mm -hmm. playing with um the Alex Harvey ba banner um with Chris. Um and Zal was very much promoted as the front man. Um, you know, he's got the kind of blonde spikes uh, that mm -hmm. for a while. And uh, you know, it was it was um as close as we could get, but you can never replace Alex. No, no. He's... they they tried, and and a couple of those vocalists just that one guy sounded he just sounded painful to listen to. Yeah, and there's a couple of them that he tried just live that are um, fine singers, but I'm sorry, the material's too idiosyncratic. It isn't a case of this is just a rock song singing it like that. No, this yeah. was written by a singular person with a very very singular vision. And a singular persona, yeah. Uh, you know, so, <clears throat> however, we can go into that in our Alex Harvey series uh, coming probably twenty twenty three. Who knows? Uh, we're we're a bit lazy fair. Uh, John's now a good old Southern boy, and, All right. and I'm just lazy. So. All right. <laughs> so, John, again, thank you for joining me here. Thank you, brother. Thank you, folks. As always, stay very safe out there, and. Love and mercy to you and your friends tonight and all nights.